Savior Jesus, we come before you, Jehovah, yes. to glorify your holy name and to praise you, for there is none like you, Jehovah, in yes. heaven and none. All the glory we give unto you, Jehovah, yes. we praise you, for there is none like you, Jehovah. All the glory unto your holy name, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you may speak to us through the word of God, that wherever your people are watching from, O oh God, of all the four corners of the world, that you have gathered them, that they may hear your word, Jehovah. I pray that you may speak to them through the word of God, through the word of knowledge, through the word of prophecy, through the word of wisdom, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that you may give us the word that is desired for our right time, in the name of Jesus, the bread for our season, in the mighty name of Jesus. The Spirit of God who searches the heart, O oh God, and who searches what is happening in our life. We pray that you may search unto us, that you may give us, O oh God, what is required of, of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jehovah. We glorify your name. We rebuke every spirit of confusion, yes. discouragement, distraction in the mighty name of Jesus. Now I pray that you may arrest our mind, our spirit, our soul, that we may hearken unto your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. We do pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us uh, to learn uh, the topic is bearing, bearing the burdens of each other. Bearing the burdens of each other. That is the word of God. And that is where uh, we, are, we, we want to turn in our book. In the book of Matthew 11.28. In the book of Matthew 11.28. Matthew chapter 11. Yes. Verse 28. Yes. And says, Matthew 11, 28. Come unto me. Come unto me. All you that labor. All you that labor. And are heavily laden. And heavy laden. And I will give you rest. And I will give you rest. For my yoke. For my yoke is easy. Mm. And my burden is light. And my burden is light. Hallelujah. Yeah. You see that Jesus Christ. As Jesus Christ also, he is trying to carry our burden. 
He's trying to carry our burden. And Jesus is saying that come to me, all you who are, are, are weary and heavy laden. Praise the name of the living God. Come to me, all you who have, uh, you, are, you are loaded with the burdens. You that are loaded with the burdens, let us go to Christ. Jesus is saying that come to me, all you that are weary and those have with, with heavy uh, burdens. And come to me and I will give you rest. Because Jesus Christ is, uh, is, is a carrier of our burden. As Jesus Christ is a carrier of our burden, so also Jesus Christ is commanding his children in this hour that we should carry each other burdens. Like Jesus Christ, the purpose of Jesus Christ, he carried our, he carried our burden, he carried our suffering, he carried our problem. So also, every, every, everyone in the church or everyone in the body of Christ or everyone, a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, will have to carry each other burdens because that is the commandment of Christ. And the Bible says also that as Jesus Christ gave himself, so we should give ourselves to others so that they may be saved, to others so that they may find their rest. Jesus Christ is saying to the body of Christ at this hour that we should carry for each other burden. Any burden that you have in the body of Christ, you, that burden belongs to another one. That burden belongs to another one because you are in the body of Christ. Like the body itself, I, I, I myself, I am a body. But unless my hand, my feet, unless they carry each other burden, we cannot be one. I cannot move because we are in one body. But we have, I have different parts. I have the leg, I have the hand, I have the, the, the eye, I have the ear. But they carry each other burden. They feel each other so that they may coordinate and so that they may carry each other burden uh, in order that my body may function or that we may move together. Even when I want to have peace, it is about carrying each other burden. Praise the name of the living God. We as the Christian today, we are a body of Christ. And if you are a body of Christ, you are a leg, I am hand, uh, you are a ear, I am eye, you are nose. We are different part, but we make the same body. So we should carry each other burdens because it is our burden. My burden, it is your burden. Your burden, it is my burden. That is the how Christ is saying to the church of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Carry each other burden. Feeling each other in the body of Christ. Look at this. Like Jesus Christ, he said that as Jesus Christ, he carried our burden. He said, come to me. All those who are weary, all those who are tired of carrying your heavy, heavy burdens, and I give, I will give you rest. So he is telling us to come to him. Also, we like Christian, we should carry each other burden, telling them that we need to, uh, to care, we need to, to take, uh, uh, to, to help them uh, in their burden, so that we may function together as the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Look at this. Even so, you see that Jesus Christ, he carried our burden, and not only our burden, but even our price. Our price, he paid our price. Also, like that, that is the same how we should do. We should carry each other burden. We should pay the price to other people. If it is a, pr a price of pain, for, uh, pain, a price of suffering, a price of a need, you should pay for the body of Christ. Praise the name of the living God. Because we are one, we are, we are one in Christ as the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. But today, you find that many people, they don't have burden of each other. Yet we are living in one body. Yet we are preaching the same gospel. Yet we, we are worshiping the same Lord, the same God. Yet we are baptized in the same baptism of the Holy Spirit. But we don't carry the burden of each other. When the other one is suffering, you don't suffer. You don't care. That is none of your business. There is no love if that is what we do. When the other one is suffering, when the other one is in need, you should also... Uh, 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 you should also be in his need. You should also show him that you are carrying him or you are carrying her. We should carry for each other burden. If you are in one body, we should feel each other because we are in one body. But when we say, oh, it is your problem, when you say it is your problem, it is also your problem because you are in the same body. When you allow your brother to suffer, 
you will also suffer if you are in the same body. When you allow them to, uh, uh, to experience uh, the pain and or to experience those things, when you don't help them, you also are experience those things if you are in the same body. Hallelujah. Amen. For I don't see how I, my body, I am one. But when, when I can say that, you see, my leg is going to fire, but my head is not going, and when, uh, my, my, when my, my head or when my eyes look at my, my legs going to fire, my, my head say, I don't care. Let him go. Let him suffer. When, the leg, when that leg will, will go to the fire, the head will also go to the fire. So we shall all both suffer. Hallelujah. Amen. If truly we are in one body, when one is suffering, you will also suffer. When one is crying, you, sh you should also cry. When one is in need, you should also be in that need. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you are in one body. But if you don't cry when I cry, if you don't suffer when I suffer, therefore we are not in one body. You are just deceiving yourself that we are together, but we are not together. Hallelujah. Amen. We need each other in this movement. We need each other in the body of Christ. For today, if the church of God everywhere, they can support each other, they can build each other, they can care for each other, they can take the burden of each other, the gospel can be preached. Really. The gospel can even go far. People would be saved because we are coordinating. We are taking each other burden. Taking the burdens so to pray to each other. Taking the burden to help each other. Taking the burdens to help, to advise each other. And taking as if it is your own burden. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. That is the same, that is the same, the, 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 the purpose or the reason why Jesus Christ came. He came to take our burden. He came to take our burdens so that we may have rest. So also, there are people who have no rest. They are wandering day and night. They are in pain. But you need to take their burden so that they may have rest. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to care them. You need to, uh, to call them. You need to visit them. You need to do something so that they may have their rest. They may have rest. And when they have rest, you will, over, you will also have rest. Jesus Christ cannot have rest when we, are, we do not have rest. Jesus Christ cannot be happy when we are not happy. When we suffer, he also suffer. So we should be one mind, one mind, one thing in the body of Christ if we want to go far in this end time. Because Jesus Christ, if there is something that Jesus Christ is doing in this hour, it is, it is uh, 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 giving people burdens. He's giving people burdens. Your burden, when you are given a burden, it is Jesus who gives you that burden. And he's giving you a burden just to hear or just to feel what he feel when he's in heaven. Praise the name of the living God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus Christ is suffering in heaven. But in order for him to come and save the world, he has to make somebody to suffer that pain. You have to be injected that pain. The pain, the same pain that Jesus Christ has so that you may do his will. So that you may also save other people. The burden that Jesus has in heaven, the burden of the lost soul, the burden of the lost uh, ministry, the burden of the lost people, the burden of the body of Christ, he will impart that burden in you if you are in him. For the Bible says that we, that, we need, we, that, that, that when Jesus Christ is in you, you become one. Because Jesus is in you. That is the saying that says, Now I am not the one that lives, but Christ lives in me. But now, if surely Christ lives in you, you will also feel the burden of other people. If Christ in heaven is feeling burden of the lost soul, is feeling burden of the lost people, is feeling burden of the needy, of the, of the, of the poor, is feeling burden of interceding for other people. If surely you are not the one living, but Christ, you will also have that burden. Amen? Amen? You will feel that pain. You will feel that burden because Christ is in you. And you are no more you, but you are in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. That is what God is saying. 
That as Jesus Christ came to carry our burden, so we should carry for each other burden. And when we say carrying each other burden, I don't mean you should carry each other sin, but each other burden. Hallelujah. Because you may say it is carrying each other burden, so let me share in your sin, so that I may experience how you experience. If it is drinking, let me help you to drink. That's not, that is not what Jesus does. Jesus carry our burden, our burden which, which when, when we, when, those burdens that make you not to have peace. Those burdens that when he take your burden, you will feel rest. Praise the name of the living God. Those burdens that make you suffer. Those burdens that make you worry. Those burdens that make you suffer and make you feel pain. Those are the burdens that Jesus Christ has come so that he may save you. Also me and you. We are here so that we may take those burdens of those people and set them free from the captivity of, of the kingdom of darkness. For those people, they do not have peace. But when we take their burden, they will, they will have a peace. They will, be, they will have rest. Uh, the Bible says that they will have liberty. Liberty in Christ. Freedom in, in Christ. When you cry to them, when you pray to them, uh, for, for them or intercede, when you do something, you will help them to have freedom in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But if we don't have burdens, therefore we cannot save anybody. We cannot do the mission of our own Jesus Christ. For Jesus says that his purpose was to, he came so that he may win the lost soul and he may, he may, he may call those that were his he came for those who had lost. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Also, we need to have burden for the lost. Because you see that today, even in the churches, many churches, they don't have the burden for the lost. They no longer preach the gospel to the lost. They no longer go for evangelism. They no longer pray, uh, preach the message of repentance, the message of salvation, of receiving Jesus Christ. For they don't have their burdens. That you see that they are, they are, they are kind of, uh, uh, in their church, uh, they, uh, 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 a robber or somebody who is not born again can visit their church, but they don't have that burden to lead them to Christ. You hear them preaching the prosperity. You hear them preaching all other gospel, but they not preach repentance. They don't carry the burden of those people. They don't carry the burden of the lost soul. And they don't ask for, 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 for a calling, for a calling of, of repentance, a repentance call. They don't have that, that, that burden to call people for a repentance call. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. It's like they assume all people are saved. That is why they don't even go to preach. They cannot even share the message. That they have uh, people who are unbelievers, but they cannot share to them that Jesus is the Lord. Because they no longer have the burden of Christ. And let me tell you, if you are a servant of God, but you don't have this, uh, the burden of the lost, you are not a servant of God. You might be a businessman, but not a pastor. Because if you are a pastor or if you are a man of God sent from by God, you will have the burden of the rest. You will have the burden of each other, of the people of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at all the servants, all the servants, all the apostles, all the prophets, all the saints that were there before the ancient. The Stephen, uh, the, the Paul, Jeremiah, and even uh, John the Baptist, and all those people. They are people who had the burden of Jesus. Burden of the work of God. Look at Nehemiah. Crying. They are crying that when the war is foreign, they are crying because they have burden. Burden of the war that are foreign. Because the country is in danger. Spiritual wars are foreign. But they don't care to pray. They don't care to fast for the nation. They don't care to fast for the country, for the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Those people, they were consumed by the burden of the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus calls you, the first thing that he give you, he will give you the burden. The burden to pray for the rest. The burden for, for the body of Christ. He will give you. And that doesn't mean that I'm telling to those that are rich. It is nothing with the richness here. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Everybody can help each other. Everybody can help each other. We are capable of helping each other. Of interceding. Of carrying each other burden in suffering. Praise the name of the living God. 
Don't say, oh, I don't take that burden because you see, I am not capable. I am not very financial. We are not speaking about financial. Hallelujah. Amen. It is all about carrying each other burden. Whether it is financial, whether it is prayer, you have something that you can do to take that burden of that brother or of that sister to take it to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why I tell you that all those saints, all those saints that uh, were there, those servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, they had one thing in common. They had the burden of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we speaking? Or are you sleeping? Hallelujah. Do you have burden of Christ? Therefore, don't sleep. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody who has burden, it is like a somebody who is pregnant. You are pregnant of that thing because you, are, you have burden, burden of Christ. So you cannot assume because you have it and you feel it. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Those servants, they had something in common, which was burden of Christ, burden of the lost soul, burden. If they see young men, young men lost, they have burden. They go and they cry for young men. If they see women, women who, have, who are lost, they cry for those women. If they see the needy, they help the needy. They have the burden to do something because they have the burden. And Christ is in them. The same thing that Jesus Christ can do when he is in this world. That is the same thing that you should do. Jesus Christ would not pass the need day. He would give what he had to them. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you have Jesus Christ, you cannot pass the need day. You cannot pass those that are lost. You will feel to do something. For Jesus Christ did not come to do those things. But he came to win the lost. He came for the lost soul. Hallelujah. Amen. When he sees that the marriage is being destroyed, Jesus Christ is crying for, for that marriage. When he sees that the children has been, uh, are, are going away, has been destroyed, also Jesus Christ will pray for those children. You see, he has come for that very purpose so that those people, they may have rest. If they are, are in sorrow, if they are, uh, they are crying, he will comfort them. He will give them his shoulder. Do you give your shoulder to those that are crying? Do you give your shoulder to those that are in sorrow? Do you visit them? Do you ask? Do you pray for them? Do you care for them? Well, that is the very purpose that Jesus Christ came to do. He came so that we may see him. He came so that we may experience him. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Because Jesus Christ, he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. And without him, we cannot see him. Hallelujah. Amen. Without having that burden, we cannot feel, we cannot even walk with him. We need a burden in the body of Christ. If truly we want to walk with Christ, we need to have burdens like Jesus Christ. Also, you, you need to have that burden so that you may serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us continue. Looking at, the, at Stephen, looking at Paul, looking at Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah, looking at Jeremiah, he was a wedding prophet. He cried when he see that the, the nation, that the nation has been scattered. Or when he see that the nation has raised another God, the foreign God. Jeremiah would cry because of another God that has been raised in the nation. When he go and he meet that there are altars of darkness that are been uh, uh, and people are worship, worshiping them, Jeremiah the prophet he would cry, he would do anything just to 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 uh, to, uh, to to help those people stop to, to stop worshiping those idols. Hallelujah. Amen. That is what God is saying. The burden of our Lord Jesus Christ. That unless we share in the burden of our Lord Jesus Christ, we cannot worship Him. We cannot be His servant. Unless you share in that burden of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the share in the burden of others, of the needy, of the body of Christ, you are not part of them. Hallelujah. Amen. How, what is that thing that makes you to be part of the body of Christ? If it's not sharing in the burdens, if it's not being in unity, if it's not being in love, what is there that makes you be part of the body of Christ if you don't have anything to do with others? Hallelujah. Amen. What is that? If you don't have anything to do with others, you cannot share in the burden of Christ and you cannot be a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So like Jesus Christ, he said that I came, I came so that they may have life and more abundantly. 
Also, we need to know that we, 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 we were saved so that others may also have life. So that others may also be set free from the captivity of the kingdom of darkness. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. For the, from the kingdom of darkness. For Jesus Christ, he came so that we may be set free. Also, you need to know that when Jesus Christ came and when you received Jesus Christ, you received Jesus Christ so that you may set other people free. Amen. Amen. He delivered you, you need to deliver others. He helped you, you need to help others. He forgave you, you need to forgive others. He loved you, you need to love others. Hallelujah. The, whatever you see Jesus doing, you need to do to other people. Because that is the body of Christ. And that is the love that Jesus Christ is saying. That the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is not, oh, it is not only speaking. Hallelujah. It is not only speaking. But also giving him all the glory and praising him. Because he is worthy to be glorified and to be praised. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So we were speaking in the, in the book of Matthew 11, 28. And we were, speak, we were speaking about carrying or sharing, bearing each other burden. Bearing the burden of each other as the, in the body of Christ. And we say that in the book of Matthew 11, 28, that Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are heavy, weary, and are uh, with the burdens, and I will give you rest. Praise the name of the Holy God. Yes. And I will give you rest. So that is what God is saying to us. That even so, we like Christian, we need to carry for each other burden in the body of Christ. We need to carry for each other burden. That when we carry each other burden, we are fulfilling the law of Christ and we are doing the will of Christ. Praise the name of the Holy God. Yes. For we say that if you are a Christian or if you are in the body of Christ but you don't have the burden uh, the body uh, the, the, the burden of each other you are not in that body for those that are in one body they feel pain when I I, I, I am in one body like this when I can I can hit my my, 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 my my hand I can feel pain because we are in one body. Praise the name of the living God. Yeah. When my leg is suffering, or when my, 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 my head is suffering, or is aching, I also will feel pain. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. When something is not well, I will also feel that I am not well. Mm. Amen? Yeah. Because we are in the same body. And that is fulfilling the, uh, fulfilling the will of Christ. That is fulfilling the will of Christ. When we share each other burden, we are fulfilling the, uh, the, 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 the will of Christ. The will of Christ is that my children might be one. There is one prayer that Jesus Christ was praying. And whenever he prayed, he was praying that, Lord, I pray that the, my children might be one. My people might be one. My sheep might be one. That they may, they, may, they may bear each other burden. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. When Jesus Christ is saying like this, he's saying that he's saying that he's praying for the body of Christ everywhere to be carrying each other burden, to be in one. That when other people are lost, when other people are suffering, you should also feel that suffering. When other people, they are crying, you should also feel their sorrow. When they are happy, you should also be happy to them. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything that they are doing, everything that they are feeling, you should feel because you are in one body. Amen. We hear that those that are twins, if they are twins, if you have little children or you are raising twins, when one child or one twin or one twin cry, the other one will cry. Amen? Amen. Because they are one, one flesh, one body. So also if we are one in Christ. We are twins because we are born in the same womb of our Lord Jesus Christ. We should also cry when others are crying. We should also be happy when others are happy. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is fulfilling the will of Christ. That is doing the will of Christ. But if we don't share in the suffering of others, therefore we don't have something in common. And we are just deceiving ourselves. For there is power when we share each other burdens. Hallelujah. Let us read in the book of Galatians 6 2. Galatians 6 2. Galatians chapter 6, mm -hmm. verse 2. Yes. Bear you one another's burdens mm -hmm. and, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says what? That the bear, bear you each other burdens. And so you fulfill the burden of who? The burden of who? 
the law of Christ Jesus Christ. That when you bear, uh, when you bear each other burden, you are fulfilling the law of our Lord Jesus Christ. And fulfilling the law of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is to bear the, the, the burden of each other. Hallelujah. Amen. When we bear the burden of each other, we fulfill the law of Christ. And what is that law of Christ? The law of Christ is love. Love. The law of Christ is love. If you don't have love, you don't have the law of Christ. Why? Jesus Christ, he came so that we may fulfill his law. And he brought the law love. Grace is love. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus Christ is saying that by bearing each other burden, we fulfill the law of Christ. And the law of Christ is love. What do you mean? Or what, uh, what, uh, what do I mean when we say bearing each other burdens? It is helping each other. When the other one is suffering, you should help them. Amen? And when you are helping them, you are fulfilling the law of Christ. Hallelujah? When other people are in need, and when you see that they are in need, they need to be, uh, you need to pray for them. When you pray for them, you are fulfilling the law of Christ. And that is love. You cannot let your, your brother to suffer. You see that your brother need prayer. You see that they, they need prayer, but you don't care for them. You don't pray for them. Is that fulfilling the law of Christ? That is not fulfilling the law of Christ. We need to be one. We need to bear each other burden. When you see that they need prayer, need this prayer, that they are suffering, you need to pray for them. When you see that they are in need, you need to help them. When they are hungry, you need to give them food. When they are lacking, you need to provide for them. That is sharing in the burdens of each other. Hallelujah. Amen. When people are lacking, some are, uh, they do not, they are homeless, you need to care for them. Either care for them for the uh, for the for the home for the for, for the house or for the bread but, or care for them you pray for them because if you don't have financially well financially you will pray for them but I don't think that you can be a Christian and you say that you, you cannot help them because you can help them physically and also you can help them uh, spiritually spiritually you can help them you can take their pardon and say oh god i pray for that man that i saw they are like a homeless man i pray for that man that oh god will help him though i don't have something to give to him but you can help him take his pardon to the lord jesus christ so that he may have rest that's the purpose of the lord jesus christ that is the purpose of every christian to take each other burden so that they may have rest, they may have freedom, they may be set free from the captivity of darkness. How can you win the rest if you don't have the burden? You know, for you to be saved, there was a person or there was a man who was used by God and he was given the burden to tell you the truth. He had the burden to tell you the truth. He had the burden to pray for you. So also we should have burden to pray for other people who are not born again. We should have burden to tell them about Jesus. To tell them about the truth. And that when you are doing the very thing, you are fulfilling the law of Christ. You can be obeying the Ten Commandments. But if you don't fulfill the law of Christ, there's no way that you are going. Hallelujah. You cannot go ahead to heaven. The law of Christ is loving each other. It is carrying each other burden. Amen? That is the same thing that you saw that when Jesus Christ was, uh, was saying about the kingdom of heaven, he was saying that there was a man who was robbed and he was, uh, he was uh, robbed by, by a thief and he, was, he, he, was, uh, he, he, was, he suffered from their hand. Praise the name of the living God. The Bible said that he, he was attacked. And that man, there comes the Pharisees. The first man, he came and he looked at the, that, that man, he did not help him. He just leave that man there, living. The brother was, uh, uh, was, was with that man. The, the man was lying, was suffering with the brother. He was being, uh, he had been attacked by the robbers, but nobody cared. The Pharisees, some of the Christians, they, they passed through him, they just looked at him and they go. Where is the burden? The burden that used to be in the Christians. That today you can pass away a man who is breathing, a man that is in pain, but you don't have something, even in your heart. 
You may not be well but, but for financially, but you even don't have that, uh, that uh, burden to pray for that man or to ask him what is happening. You just go and you say, ah, you see, we are living in evil days. They are robbers. Praise the name of the living God. Let us be taking for each other burden so that those that do not have rest, they may have rest. Because there was a man who came from heaven. He came with a passion. He came with a burden for you to be saved. And he took all your burden so that you may be saved too. We also, we need to take for each other burden so that many people might be saved um, uh, will be set free. Hallelujah. Amen. Switch that right. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus Christ is saying that unless we take we, we, we take each for each other burden, we cannot fulfill the law of Christ. And that is love. We may say that we love each other, that we are, we, we are in one body, but if we don't have love, that is not the body of Christ, but the body of another one. The body of Christ is one. And love is the greatest. I will say we may prophesy, we may preach, we may sing, we may do many things, but if we don't have love, love is, is caring for each other burdens. If you don't have something like that, you cannot, you cannot please God and you cannot fulfill the law of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Helping each other. There are people who need to be checked. There are people who need to be visited. Are you visiting them? There are people among you in the body of Christ who are suffering. Are you going to visit them? Are you suffering together with those that are suffering? There are people who need to be cared. There are people who need to be, to be helped. There are people who need prayers. In the, in the body of Christ, they are suffering. Suffering, they have pain. Suffering, suffering from the kingdom of darkness. Do you take their burdens to pray for them? Hmm? Those that pray for them, you fulfill the law of Christ. But if you don't pray for them, you don't fulfill the law of Christ. And the law of Christ is love. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Taking the burden of each other. It is feeling each other. You are feeling each other. That when I cry, you cry. When I am happy, you get happy. That your happiness is to see that I am also happy. Your happiness is not to see that I am suffering, but your happiness is to see that I am happy and I am well. Hallelujah. Amen. That is taking each other burdens. Because if we don't fulfill the law of Christ, we cannot see Christ. And the Bible says that unless our righteousness surpasses that of Pharisees and Sadducees, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. The Pharisees, they were well, they were in modesty, outward appearance, they are well, but they did not have the burden to carry for each other. Amen? Amen. When they saw the prostitute there, they judged them and they frocked them out. But they did not have the passion of those prostitutes to pray for them, to intercede for them, or even to sit down with them and to share the word of God. They were so religious. Religious that they could not even dare to speak to them. They don't speak with the sinners. They don't speak with the prostitutes. They don't pray for them. Why? That is why. Unless our, our righteousness, your holiness today, surpasses or exceeds that of Pharisees, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. We need to have the burden to each other. The burden of the lost soul. The burden of the lost people. Because we say that the apostles, the prophets, they were people who got Burden of the lost soul, burden of other people, burdens of Christ. They had the burden of Christ in them. That is why they preached the gospel because of the burden that was in them. They were not ashamed because of the burden of Christ, the burden of the lost soul, the burdens of the people of God in them. They fulfilled the great thing because they had the burden inside them. But let me tell you, if you want to be my friend, you need to have my burden. But if, if you don't have my burden, I, you cannot be my friend. And you will be a fake friend. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. That is sure. And that is true. True friendship, it is a friend that have burden of each other. Amen? That when I am happy, you should also be happy. When I am crying, you should also be crying and you want to help me. How can I have peace? 
But if we are afraid and you don't have my pardon, therefore that means, you say, you don't have my business. And who is that if it's not an enemy? The enemy does not have any business to do with you. But a friend, a true friend has the burden of you. A true friend will cry when you cry. A true friend will help you when you are in need. A true friend will be happy when you are happy. Hallelujah. That is why I say that the ancient saint, they had one thing in common. They had the burdens of each other. And that is why the Bible says that no one lacked among them. That whatever they had, they considered as if it is for them. No one, even if they, they own land, they did not consider as they, it belonged to them. But they considered they belonged to all, to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Whatever that they had, they were sharing because they had the pardon of each other. You see, you can be surprised to hear that there is a, a certain person who is praying and asking God, Oh God, give me that job. Give me that work. But you are in the same church or you are in the same body of Christ. You are worshipping the same God. And here there is a person who has the opportunity to employ or to give that person the job. But he cannot give you. You say, I don't want uh, uh, to be disturbed. I don't want the disturbance of the people of God. Hallelujah. You see, you can be the head of the other people, person. That we are here, we are praying, oh God, do this and this. And here, and here we are, there, is, there is somebody who has your, your answer. But he don't have the burden. Unless the Lord put his, him a burden of you, he cannot do anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why I'm telling you that if we can have burden of each other, the body of Christ can be one. And the body of Christ can be established. The gospel can be preached. The lost soul would be saved. Hallelujah. And many people would come to be saved because we are one and we are taking the burden of each other. Right? Jesus Christ took our burden. So let us be, uh, take uh, the burden of each other. Amen? Amen. You need to feel each other. Feeling each other. Whatever is happening, feeling each other. When you don't see him or when you don't see about brother, I, do you pray for him? Do you ask him, how are you brother? How are you sister? How, how are you going? But he say, I don't care. That is not the law of Christ. The law of Christ is love. Bearing each other burden, praying for each other, helping for each other, and feeling each other. If we want to serve God in this hour, we must fulfill the law of Christ. Hallelujah. That is what God is saying. We need to care for each other. What do we mean by caring for each other? The same way that you would want you to be cared to by others, the same way that you would care others. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you care yourself? Also care others. And that is why you see Jesus saying that the same way that you love yourself, you should love the others. Love your neighbor. The same way that you love yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. That means you are caring other people the same way you care for yourself. You are having them that burden the same way that you have burden for yourself. That if you see your brother, he don't have the shoe, or he is lacking something, you need to, to take that shoe. You need to put that shoe in his. You need to, to, to wear his shoe so that he may take his burden. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, you cannot have a friend and your friend is lacking, but you have. You have two, but your friend has none. He don't have anything. Your friend has no shoe, but you have two shoe, two uh, pair of shoe. You need to give him one if you have the burden of him. Hallelujah. Amen. That is how it means by caring for each other. Caring not only on your interest, but at the interest of other people. Hallelujah. Amen. That is what God is saying to us. When we care for each other, we are caring the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said that whatever you do for those least of my disciples, you do it for me. When you welcome them, you welcome me. When you reject them, you reject them. You reject him. When you care for them, you care for me. Hallelujah. Because that, that thing that we do, when we care for each other burden, we are doing it for Christ, not for people. Hallelujah. If we can only share in the burden of each other, I tell you that the gospel of Christ will be preached. The church would be established. People would not suffer. The people of God would not suffer, suffer their suffering. 
Amen? Amen. The people of God are suffering. The body of Christ is suffering because of some people who don't have the burden of each other. Hallelujah? And I say that you may not have the burden, you may not have uh, financially, but you can pray for them, you can do something and to pray and nobody who is in the rest to help somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Nobody who, who is powerless to help somebody. Anybody that is born again, you can help other people. You can share the burden of other people in, in whichever ways. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Do you have the burden of the work of God? Do you have the burden of the gospel? Do you have the burden of the church of Christ? Do you have the burden of others? Hallelujah. Amen. If you don't have, you don't fulfill the law of Christ. And the law of Christ is love. We need to have the burden of the gospel, the burden of Christ, that when we see something is not moving well, have a burden that you, you need to stand in that gap and fulfill that thing. Amen? Amen. Like, like last, time, last Sunday, from uh, last Sunday, my computer got spoiled. And then I, that the whole of the week, I was not streaming, streaming I was not preaching online. So, there are people who are asking, what is happening, what is happening? And I told them it is called my computer. But I, I, I have taken it to the electrician. But there is a, 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 one, a, one, a, one man who was touched by God, and he bought a new brand computer. Amen. For the sake of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, it is the burden of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are people who God will put a burden, so that the gospel of God will move. There are people who will be used by God so that the gospel will not lack. So that the gospel will keep on reaching to people. The same thing that happened to the, to, to the ministries of, of Paul, to the ministry of Isaiah, to the ministry of the apostles. There are people who God brought and he gave them a burden to support them so that the gospel will be preached. For the apostles would not preach the, uh, preach the gospel without their help. They needed somebody to take another step. Amen. Here we have the gospel. We have the message, yes, but we don't have the technology. How can this message reach to people? You see? We can have something. You can have that gift. Yes, you have that message that God has given you. But how we need to reach to people? Somebody else will come and will take a stand and stay. I will take the message to another level. I will pay for you for the for, for the TV program and the, the gospel shall be preached. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we are one, we share each other burden. And when we share each other burden, we establish and we preach the kingdom of God together. Amen. But this work, I tell you, it is not my own work. It is also your work. Whatever I do, it is not my own. It is also your work. The gospel is not mine. The gospel belongs to Jesus Christ. And if you are born again, you can support the gospel. You can pray for the gospel. You can intercede for the gospel. You can do something for other people. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Because there is, the, the gospel belongs to our God. And we are all together uh, praying that people will be saved and enter that kingdom. So therefore we can unite together and do something for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why I'm saying that we need to care for each other and to fulfill the law of Christ by carrying each other burdens. Amen? Amen. That when you, see, when you see that there is a loophole, a loophole whereby you need to stand in the gap, just stand in the gap and just do it. Hallelujah. Amen. And fulfill the law of Christ, which is love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I tell you, my dear brother and my sister. That the same that overcame, they had the burden, the burden of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at this, my dear brother and my sister. That Jesus Christ, he is the bridegroom. And there is a bride who is the, is the lost soul, the lost soul, or the lost soul, the lost, world, the lost people. They are the bride. But Jesus Christ has paid the bride price. But that bride is not prepared. When you take yourself into the shoe of the bridegroom, how would you feel? Look at this. That, it, that during the time that you are wedding, you had paid the bride price, and the bride is not prepared. She don't have even the garment. She is not even in her house. She is there in the world. 
and your wedding is very near. How would you feel as the bride? As the bridegroom? You would feel pain. So that is the same thing that Jesus Christ is feeling. Seeing that the church is not prepared. Seeing that people are not prepared for the kingdom of, uh, for the kingdom of heaven. Seeing that he have, uh, he, he, he have paid everything. The marriage feast of the Lamb of God is prepared. He has prepared the, uh, the, 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 the he has prepared, he has slaughtered. Everything is prepared. The food is prepared. Look at that, that budget, the budget of the food, the budget of slaughtering. But the, yet the bride is not prepared. How would you feel? Very painful. Saying that, oh, now will I waste this type of, of, of food? I will waste my food, I will waste my time, I will waste because she's not prepared. That's the same thing that Jesus Christ is feeling. When he sees the church of God is lost, when he sees that young, young men, they are smoking there, they are in drugs, they are in alcohol, they are in prostitution, he feels pain. And if you are a Christian in this hour, that pain will be given unto you. And you will become like a pregnant woman in labor pain. That you are crying for the lost soul. You are feeling pain for those that are lost. When you look at the nation, when you look at the street, when you look at the women, when you look at the young men, when you look at the, at the condition of the world today, you will feel crying, oh God, save them. Oh God, deliver them. Why are they, are they, are they lost? Why? Because they are lost. Because many people, they don't have the burden to reach them, to tell them about Jesus, to help them see Christ. Hallelujah. Let us take the pardon of each other because that is the role of every Christian. And he said that as he gave himself to us, we should give ourselves to others. Jesus Christ gave himself to you. You should give yourself to others. Give yourself to their need. Give yourself to, your, to their suffering. Give their, yourself to their time. Amen. The body of Christ is one body. And we need to share and bear each other burdens. Amen? Amen. We are parts, but we are one body. Many parts. You are there, I am there. You are scattered all, all everywhere in the nation. Even you that you are listening. You are scattered. Some are scattered in America. Some are scattered in Saudi Arabia. Some are scattered in Arabian nation, in Asia, in Africa. But we are scattered. But we are one body. Look at that. That if only we can unite together, if only we can bear each other burden and bear each other burden and be united together, we can reach many more people than how we are reaching today. Because the work of God, you cannot fulfill the work of God as one. The work of God needs a teamwork. It is a teamwork. Even God Himself, He works in a teamwork. He is one, but He works in a teamwork. There is the Holy Spirit. There is the Lord Jesus Christ. There is the God Himself, God the Father. You see, He is one God, but He He have to to to, to work in a teamwork. He is one. The body of Christ is one, but we have prophets, we have evangelists, we have pastors, we have teachers, but they are all one in the body of Christ. So meaning that unless we are together and be a teamwork, we cannot do the gospel of Christ Jesus Christ. We cannot stand in this hour. We cannot even fight the devil in this hour. Unity is power. For the Bible says, two are better than one. Amen? Amen. Unity is power. And God says that when we, we unite together and pray, God will hear. We will shake the nation. We recall the revival back in the church. The holiness back in the streets. Because we bear each other burden. And you don't have the burden of each other. You cannot continue and you cannot walk this far. Amen? Amen. I tell you that the way that you, have, you, you stand today and the way that you are standing as a Christian, it is a, as a result of somebody who got a burden of you. It's a result. The way you enjoy that I am in Christ. I am enjoying the favor of God. I am enjoying the blessing of the Lord. I am enjoying the grace of God. It is not by you. There was a, there was a man who came and he paid it for you. He paid your debt. He paid for you to enjoy that grace. Jesus Christ. He has he have paid so that you may enjoy the grace. So you also you need to pay for other people so that they may enjoy the freedom and the liberty in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the purpose of our Jesus Christ. That the way you see, 
that I am preaching, I am standing, it is not as my, my, my result. It is not by my power. There, there is somebody who has been touched by God and he, he has been given a burden. A burden to pray for me. A burden to intercede for me. Hallelujah. Amen. When I, 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 I preach the gospel, when I take the gospel, there is somebody who has been given a burden by God that he will take care of my shoe. He will take care of my clothes. He will take care of my food. Amen. Amen. And by him, the gospel is being preached. So it is a teamwork. So even in the body of Christ, we need teamwork. Teamwork to work together. Burden of feeling each other. When your brother is sick, when your brother is in need, you need to feel him. You need to care for him. You need to take his burden. Hallelujah. Amen. But when we say we don't care, it is none of our business. We are losing. We are losing. We are losing the kingdom of heaven. We are losing what we should be doing by now. Amen. That is what God is saying. The Holy Spirit. Like the Holy Spirit, you see, like the Holy Spirit, He help us to carry the burden. When the Holy Spirit come unto you, He will help you to, to, uh, to carry the burden of each other. Because the Holy Spirit, He intercedes for us. The Holy Spirit, He is called our comforter. He is called our counselor. Why? He is our comforter. He feels us. He feels us. He feels how we are suffering. When we cry before God, when we have pain, the Holy Spirit, He will feel that pain. Amen? Amen. So if you have the Holy Spirit, you will feel the pain of each other. You will feel the pain of your sister who are lost there. Your brothers, your mother, your father who are lost. And you will cry for them, for them to be saved. Because the Spirit of God is in you. But I tell you. That if you are a Christian, but you, you don't have that burden of the lost people, you don't, you don't have the Holy Spirit. When you enter into a bus, when I enter into the, into the bus, and when I sit there, one thing that I do, I pray for those lost souls. I may not be given the chance to preach at the bus, because there are, there are those bars that are written, no hoking, no preaching. No hoking, no preaching. Now, hoping and preaching, they, 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 they have said it is one thing there. Because today the gospel is like hoping. Hoping people, business. So when I enter into those bars, because I cannot preach, it doesn't mean that I, don't, I cannot do any other thing. I will pray for them. I will start interceding and saying, Oh God, here there are people who are lost. Here there are people who are suffering. Here there are people who are bright. Here there are people who are bounded. And I pray that you may set them free. In Jesus' name. You will start taking their burden unto the Lord Jesus Christ. And you don't know the power of prayer because there, there can be people, many people will be saved by those prayers. And when you reach in heaven, God will show you and he will give you crowns in heaven and tell you, do you remember that you used to pray for people when you enter in the car, you used to pray silence, you used to pray. When you, 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 you pray, you, when you pray, there are they are, they are souls that are saved. Fifty people are saved because of you praying. You see, it is the power of prayer. The prayer of righteous avails much. Don't ignore the prayer of righteous. Even if you pray for one minute, that prayer is effective and God will hear it. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That is praying for taking the burden of each other. When you go to hospital, when you see that, that they are suffering, children are suffering, women are suffering, do you pray for them? Do you feel something? Or you just enter the hospital and you get out and you go and you continue to eat as usual? Do you feel something? If you really you have the Holy Spirit of the living God, you will feel pain for those people that are suffering. When you see the condition of how women are crying there, men are crying there, children are crying there, you will feel pain and you take their burden to the Lord Jesus Christ and pray for them. So I tell you, my dear brother and my sister, those who have burden of each other, if you show those, if you care for them, one day somebody will be sent and will care for you the same way you care for them. If you show, if you took their burden, one day somebody will be sent and will take your burden. If you pay for them, somebody will come and will pay for all your debt. Because you paid for them. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, it is tit for that. The same measure that you measure to others, the same shall be measured unto you. 
Aleluia. Amen. That was the Bible says. Let us read in the book of Numbers 11, 17. Numbers 11, 17. You will learn that this was not only in the New Testament, but also in the Old Testament. When God was dealing with the children of Israel, when he was dealing with the children of Israel and with Moses, his servant. Moses, the servant of God. He bared the, the, the burden of the children of Israel. When he, they were crying, Moses was crying. When, he was, when they were in need, Moses was in need. Imagine my dear brother and my sister. That one time, Moses, Moses went to pray God. And he went to fast for 40, 40 days. Not because of him, but because of the children of Israel. Look at that. When God wanted to destroy the children of Israel, Moses said no. And he, he went to pray for 40, 40 days. That you are, going, you are fasting for, for people. Taking the burden of the people. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Where are those people? Those people that were like Moses. Where are those women? Women who can fast. Not of their self, but they are fasting because of others. Where are those brothers who can fast? Not because of themselves, but they are fasting because of a certain brother. So that he may be delivered. So that that sister may be healed. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the same thing that Jesus Christ is saying. Taking the burden of each other in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. That when we take our burdens, when we take their burden, Jesus Christ will take our burden. For whatever you do to them, it will honor to you. Numbers 11, 17. Numbers chapter 11 and verse 17. Uh -huh. And I will come down and talk with you there. Yes. And I will take some of the spirit which is upon you. And will put it upon them, mm -hmm. and they shall bear the burden of the people with you. Yes, that you bear it not yourself alone. Hallelujah! Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Look at that. Let us go slowly. And I will come down and talk with you there. And I will come down and talk with you there. And I will take some of the spirit which is upon you. Hear this. And I will take some of the spirit that is upon you now, Moses. Uh -huh. And I will and we Moses Moses had the spirit of taking the burden. He had that spirit of burden, burden of each other, that spirit of caring each other. Now God is telling to him, I will take some of the spirit that is in you, that burden that is in you, and I will put to other people. That is what I pray, oh God. That you may take the spirit that is in me and put to these people. Take to them and put to them. Uh -huh. And will put it upon them. And will put them upon, upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with you. And they shall bear the burden of the people with you. That not only me alone, but you too, you will bear the burden. The burden of the gospel of Christ. The burden of the lost soul. The burden in the house of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the spirit that is needed in the church of God today. That is the spirit that is needed in the body of Christ today. The spirit of bearing each other burdens. That when you see that a certain man of God is going away from the line of the truth, you pray for him, you fast and pray, Oh God, restore that man. Oh God, restore that prophet. Restore that man. Restore that pastor. Because he's going away, restore him to the truth. Because you bear the burden of that man. You bear the burden of the children that he is reading. Hallelujah. That is the very thing that Jesus, that God had to do. He saw that this work is so much. This work is so hard for Moses to be done, to do alone. Imagine, the Bible says that when Moses was attend, was, was servicing his people, or when he was, he was uh, 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 catering for, for the need of his people, he had to stay uh, in the morning, morning to the night, standing, with, uh, sitting down in, the, in a seat, and judging those people, and catering for their need. Hallelujah. Serving them from morning to night. Him alone. That's the name of the Lord. Moses was a great man. But the Bible says that he was the, humble, the, the most humble prophet who have ever been there. Taking the burdens of those people. Praying for their need. Going to fast for them. So that they may, be, uh, they may have rest. Look at this. This was an example of who was coming. The Lord Jesus Christ who was coming. He took our burden. He paid for us so that we may have rest. So that we may enjoy what we enjoy. 
You enjoy that peace, but you don't know that peace. Somebody paid for that peace for you. He paid, he was nailed at the cross for that peace that you are feeling today. Why should you not carry the burdens of each other people so that they may also enjoy this great salvation that has come unto us? Hallelujah! We need to carry for the burdens of each other and to have the same spirit that Moses also had. The spirit of serving each other, the spirit of taking each other apart, and God as uh, and God uh, uh, poured the spirit to other people, to other men, so that they may also bear, carry the burdens of the people of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is where you see that from there, you see now many people that are coming, even Nehemiah, uh, even Ezekiel, uh, Jeremiah, Isaiah. All those prophets, they are coming because God has poured his spirit unto them so that they may have the burden that they cannot eat. In fact, the Bible says, you hear them saying, those prophets, like Daniel, that I sat, I sat down and I wept. I wept when I saw that the war had fallen. Why? They had the burden inside them. That I sat down for three days. I did not eat or drink. I ate no bread. I drink no uh, nothing. But I cried and wept for the nation, for those people. Look at this. He's not crying for his wife. He's not crying for his children that he has born. He's crying for people that he don't know. He's crying for people that are too far from his family. Why? He's not eating because of them. Hallelujah. Because he bear the burden. That is the same burden that Jesus Christ is saying to us as the body of Christ. That let us bear each other burden. And so when we do that, we fulfill the law of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> Sorry. Like now you see that uh, in, the, in the church of God or in the body of Christ, there are, there are many things to be done here. You, do you have the burden of the church of God? The burden who wash the church? Women who watch the church, the church, the one that watch the church, the church maybe not here, but do you have the burden that you can watch the church, the church, praise the name of the God, or you can sweep the church? Do you have the burden? Who pay the the, 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 the church? Who pay the rent? Do you have the burden? What happened here? You see, we just you you can come just come and sit down, but do you really have the burden of what happens? When you see that there is no worshiper here, who, there's nobody who is worshiping here. Do you have the burden that you can come and start worshiping along with those that are worshiping? Amen? Amen. Do you have the burden that you can do that thing that I should be doing? You should be also doing. Hallelujah. Amen. Any prayers that you want, wherever you see that there is a loophole, a loophole in the worship, a loophole in, in, in the in the in the, uh, in the, in the electronics and uh, these machines, you need to have a burden. Ah. Let me do that thing. You see, when you have burden, doesn't mean that you are perfect. Burden does not mean anything to do with perfectness. But God used those that have burdens, not those who are perfect or professional. God uses those that have burdens. If you have burden, God is willing to bless you. God is willing to teach you. God is willing to perfect you. Because you have the burden. You can say, Oh God, I have the burden to pray for the lost soul, but, but I don't know how to start. Just have the burden. God will teach you. <coughs> Hallelujah. Just have the burden, God will teach you. You say, Lord, I have the burden to reach to the people who are in the US, uh, South Africa or in USA or to the white people. Just have the burden. God will help you reach them. That is the one, only one word that I will add. God need burdens. He don't need a professional. God need burden. He don't need riches. He just need you to have the burden. Amen. Amen. Nehemiah four seventeen. <coughs> We need to unite each other and run from Nehemiah. Run. Let us run from Nehemiah. Nehemiah the, prof uh, the prophet, the servant of God. Nehemiah 4.17. What he did 
and how they were coordinating when they were building the wall. It is not the wall of Nehemiah, but it's the wall that we present uh, the children of Israel, they represent all people. Just that burden he had, he weep, he cried. That when he saw that the wall had fallen, he wept and he cried because of that wall. And he thought, how can we rebuild that wall? Amen? Amen. We like Christians, there are many times that you have passed somewhere and you see that the wall is broken. The marriage is broken. The, the, the business is broken. The children are lost. Maybe some are sick. That is, the wall is broken. You pass the wall and you see that the wall has been broken. But do you, do you feel like Nehemiah? How can I rebuild that wall? How can I do something to rebuild, to raise them back? When the wall is broken, they fall. Some fall and they backslide. Do you feel the burden? How can I pray so that those that have backslided, that they may be saved? How can I rebuild that wall like Jeremiah and Nehemiah? Mm -hmm. Nehemiah chapter 4 mm -hmm. and verse 17. Yes. They who build on the wall, mm. and they that bore burdens, mm. so burden themselves. Mm. Everyone with one of his hands mm. worked in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. See, that when they had that, they, they had burdens, so they burdened themselves. You see, he said, they burdened themselves. They had the burden for the work of God. They had the burden for that wall to be rebuilt. And you see the Bible say that one of them, one was holding weapon. weapon. And the other one, and the other one, one worked. And the other one worked. Hallelujah. So, meaning that some of them, they, they all had one thing in common. They had the burden. The greatest wall that you see, it is raised by the by a people who had the burden. Hallelujah. The greatest ministry that you see, the perfect ministry that you see, it is raised and established by people who had the burden. They had the burden. And that burden, they raised the church of God. They raised and they rebuilded that wall. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That is the same thing. That when they saw that, they were burdened and they were working. Some were working and some were holding the weapon. Meaning, it's like the work of God. When some are preaching the gospel, some are holding the weapon. Weapon how? They are praying for them. They are in spiritual battle. They are praying for them to pray for, to preach the gospel. They are, you see, they had a burden. And that is how they raised that wall. They raised that wall. Because they had a burden. Nehemiah had the burden. When he saw that the wall and the gates have been crushed by fire, he had a burden. But the ministers of God, he don't have that burden. When we see that the homosexual, that today men, they don't want to be women, they want other men, homosexual, that is a burden. I feel a burden to pray for them because the devil has bewitched them. Hallelujah. Amen. It is a burden that when you see those people, they are out there, they are drunkard. You have a burden to oh God and say, oh God, remember them. Even if they are your boss or they have employed you, pray for them if you have the burden. Stop cursing them, but pray for them so that God will set them free. Amen? Amen. Let me tell you, my dear, when we bear each other burden, God will bear your burden. When you serve others, God will serve you. He will serve you. He will serve you. Like a king will be served because there are times you serve somebody. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, that those that refresh others, they will also be refreshed. If you refresh others, you will also be refreshed. If you give them a, a, cold, a, a cup of cold water, you also will be refreshed in heaven. Or somebody will come and he will refresh you. He will remember you for that thing that you did. Because you bear the burden of each other and God took your burdens. Hallelujah. Amen. When you show concern, God will also show concern upon you. Why? Because the Bible says where well, that God will show mercy to those that show mercy. If you show them mercy, God will show mercy unto you. If you assume them, you will also be assumed that that time that you will have pain, or the time that you will be suffering, that time that you will be in need, you will cry for help. Nobody will care for you. Why? When they cried, you did not care them. When they were in need, you did not give them. You did not help them. 
The same thing that you do to them will be done to you. For the same measure will be measured unto you. Luke 6, 38. So let us run to bear for each other burdens. When you see that the men of God, they are falling, don't, don't laugh for them. But pray for them. Take their burden. It is no will of anybody to fall. It is the will of the devil that they may fall. But it is not the will of Christ for anybody to get lost. Jesus said that I am not willing for anybody to perish. But I am willing for them to, be, to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to repent and to be saved. That means it is not the will of God for them to fall. So when they fall, you need to have the burden, the same burden of Jesus Christ that Jesus is crying for them. Jesus is weeping for them. Holy Spirit is, is, is interceding for them. Let us take those burdens and also pray for them. Hallelujah. Amen. So let me tell you, you don't live by our power or you don't live by our prayer. We live by, we live by the prayer of others. We live by, uh, by others who pray for us. They intercede for us. Many are times that I feel that I am, I am, I am going down. Many are, are times that I, I feel that ah, I am losing up. I want to give up. But because of your prayers, because of the somebody who pray and somebody who fasted, he fasted not of, of him, but he fasted. He said, I will pray for the servants of God. And he prayed for the servants. Those prayer, where I was, I was falling. And God, he gave me strength. And I woke up. Hallelujah. Amen. Your prayer can raise me. Amen. The prayer that you pray can raise somebody. Like you, you have been raised by prayer. For whatever that has been done by God, that thing will be raised by prayer. Amen. Amen. Whatever that has been born by God will be raised by, pray by prayer. So you need to know that if you are born again, you will be raised by God. You will be established by God. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the secret. Luke 6 38, as we come to conclude. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Mm -hmm. Press down. Mm -hmm. And shaken together. And shaken together. And running over. And running over. And men shall give and into your lap. Yes. For with the same measure that you measure, yes. it shall be measured unto you. It shall be measured unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. The way you measure other, the way you serve them, the way you pray to them, the way you, you, you do, you help them, the way you carry their burden, the way you feel that when they, 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 they have they are in, in a situation or they are in a in a certain certain uh, place whereby they are in need. The, the same thing that you feel when your brother or when your sister is suffering, that same thing that you feel, God will put them when you are in problem and they will feed that thing unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. They will have pardon for you. And let me tell you, when you have pardon to people, God will have pardon to you. And let me tell you, when God has pardon unto you, God will surely bless you. He will surely do for you. He will surely care for you because you have the burden that you For the same, same thing that you do to them, you will do, God will do to you. And the Bible says that give and it shall be given unto you. But how can you be given if you don't give to them? Hallelujah? Amen. You see, you just want to receive, but you don't want to give. Do you give your time? Do you give your care? Do you give your time? Do you give yourself to them so that you may be given? Hallelujah. Amen. It might be that you are given, but you don't do. But you need also to give in return for your storage. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why he say, for the same measure shall be measured unto you. If you show mercy, God will show you mercy. If you take their pardon, God will take their pardon. You are pardoned. Let us bear pardons of each other. And God will bear your pardons and the pardons of your children. You may bear the burdens of others, but you don't know that your children, one day, God will send somebody to take care of your children. The same way you take care of the children of other people. The same way you provide for them, God will provide you. Hallelujah. The same way you pray for people, God will pray. We send people to pray for you. Hallelujah. 
That is what God is saying to us as the body of Christ. Let us have the burden. The burden of our Lord Jesus Christ. The burden of the work of God. The burden of each other. For if we are in the same body of Christ, let us fear each other. Let us care for each other. That when one is crying, you should cry. When one is suffering, you should also suffer. When you should care, you should be in one. Because the battle that we are fighting, if we don't have burdens, oh, we will lose the battle. We will lose this battle if we don't have that burden. But if we have the burden, we will win the battle that we are fighting in this hour. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus Christ is coming. His kingdom is near. Everything is prepared in heaven. But the saints are not ready. Let us have the burden of the bride. That the bride is praying for them to be ready. Let us also have that burden. That they may also be ready. Hallelujah. Amen. Have the burden and pray for them. Have the burden and call of God to prepare them, to touch them, to transform them, to restore them. Because the bridegroom, uh, because the bridegroom is coming. The church is not ready. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus Christ is coming. But the church of God is foreign. Who will intercede for the church of God? Who will stand and pray for the church of God? Who will stand and intercede for those that are preaching the gospel? Who will stand and intercede for those that are preaching the gospel of the Lord? We need people, men of God, who have the burden to pray and to intercede for the men of God, to intercede for those that go mission. When you hear that certain people, they are in mission, do you pray for them? You can't be surprised that when you hear that certain men here, they are in mission, they don't care. They don't even pray for them. And they say, ah, oh, you are back. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Where is that burden? That when you hear that something is yeah, that I am going for a mission, do you pray for me? When you hear that he, he, he is going for a mission, do you pray for them? Do you care? And say, oh, if that is the thing, therefore, I want to partake in that mission too. I will cater for where you receive. <coughs> I will cater for the fear. I will cater for the transport. I will cater for anything. Or I will pray for you. Hallelujah. That is the character of the children of God who bear the burden of each other. Amen? Amen. But if we don't do any of that thing, we don't have the burden of each other and we cannot be established. The gospel cannot be preached. We will lose the battle. And the battle need, need us to bear the burden of each other. <clears throat> In order for many people might be saved, Jesus Christ is coming. Let us show mercy, and God will show mercy unto you. Let us care for others, and God will care for you. Do anything that you do, and save the lost. Do anything that you do, and, uh, and set them free, so that they may have rest. For Jesus said, come to me all those who are weary, and with, with heavy burden, and I will give you rest. So also, you should give rest to other people by taking their burden. And by doing so, we fulfill the, 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 the role of our own Jesus Christ. For without it, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Let us love each other. Let us have the burden, the burden of the ministry, the burden of the work of God, the burden. Everything that you see, every position that you see, that in that position there is racking, in that position there is a need, in that position you can do something or there is a loophole, go and stand there and fulfill it. Take that burden and God will take your burden also. Amen? Amen. And we shall preach the gospel and win more so as the Lord Jesus Christ will be coming. Amen. Amen. You people, we need to have the burden of each other, the burden of the Rosso, the burden of your neighbor. Do you pray for your neighbor? Do you intercede for your people, for your labor, for your uh, for for your work, work for your those people who you work with? Do you intercede for them? Do you pray for them? Do you share for them the good? Do you have the burdens? What they are passing, or do you assume them? If you don't, if you would not want something to be done to you, therefore don't do it to other people. If you would not want your phone to be assumed, don't assume other people. Hallelujah.
if you do not want uh, other people to behave that way you behave, also don't behave that way to them when they are in need. Hallelujah! And that is what Jesus is saying, because Jesus is love, and that love we cannot please him. So we must fulfill the law of Christ. The thing that Jesus, God is saying, that the church of God must be one, the bride of Christ must be one, the body of Christ must be one. Wherever you are watching from, from your houses, wherever you are watching, we must be one in the spirit. We may not be one in the body here, there, and there, but we are one in the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are baptized by the same Holy Spirit. We worship the same God. We follow the same, we have the same faith. Therefore, why should we not bear each other burdens? Because when you are strong, I will be strong. But when you are weak, I will also be weak. We are in the same body. Hallelujah. Amen. When you have the victory, I will also have the victory. When you lose, I will lose. Because we are in the one body. So when we hold together and we stand together, we shall have the victory together. And that will be, bring glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let us pray in the name of Jesus Christ as we finish. Our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, our God, yes. we give you all the glory, we praise you, for there is none like you, Jehovah, in heaven and earth. Thank you for teaching us, Jehovah. You have taught us your word that we should bear each other burden so that we may fulfill the law of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord Jesus, for you say that the way, the, the, the same way that you gave yourself unto us, we should give ourselves to others. And the same way that you care, we should also care, Jehovah. And the more that you give us, the more we should give to others. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that the spirit that you gave those 70 men that were with Moses, that you gave them the spirit that was in Moses, the burden of serving people, the burden of praying to people, the burden of setting them free. I pray the same spirit of them and the burden, oh Lord, to these people in the name of Jesus. The burden of the kingdom of God, the burden of the Lord Jesus, the burden of the body of Christ, the burden of the gospel, the burden of the servant, the burden of the Lord's soul, the burden of those that are suffering, the burdens of the poor, the burdens of the needy, in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus Christ. Oh Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that your spirit come. Welcome, Holy Spirit. And let your spirit be unto them. That they may also do what you can do, Jehovah Lord. In the name of Jesus. I pray that burden unto your people. That Jehovah God the burden to unite. The burden for prayers. The burden to intercede. The burden to bring the gospel. The burden to support the gospel. The burden to establish your kingdom. The burden, the burden over to worship you. In the name of Jesus. And I pray Jehovah. That when your people will show burden to the living. And to the lost soul. And to you Jehovah. I pray that you will take their burden. In the name of Jesus. Their sickness in Jesus name. Their problem in Jesus name. Take their burden as the way they have been taking the burden in the name of Jesus. The way they have been caring, oh Lord, for the work of God. The way they have been caring for the living. The way they have been caring for the orphan. The way they have been caring for those that are sick. For those that are in bed. For those that are in need. I pray that you take care of their need in the name of Jesus. Oh God, bless your people. Support them the way they have supported them. Serve them the way they have served them. In the mighty name of Jesus. For the same measure shall be measured unto them. In the name of Jesus. Help us, Jehovah, to be fulfilled the law of Christ. By loving each other. And by having the pardon of each other. In the mighty name of Jesus. We do pray and even believe. Amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We give all the glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you so much, you who are watching, are watching along with us. And in the presence, you are together in the spirit. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. And may you have the burden of each other, of the body of Christ, of all other people, without partiality. Because the same will be patient unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Sour. You cannot
can't hide it from God. You cannot hide it from God. You may cover your sin, but the world may not see. But you cannot hide it from God. You cannot hide it from God. You cannot hide it from God. You may cover your sin that the world may not see, but you cannot hide it from God. I cannot hide it from God. I cannot hide it from God. I may cover my sin that the world may not see, but I cannot hide it from God. We cannot hide it from God. We cannot hide it from God. We may cover our sins that the world may not see, but we cannot hide it from God. We cannot hide it from God. We cannot hide it from God. You may cover your sins that the world may not see, but you cannot hide it from God. Hallelujah. Get the end time writings of Apostle Simon Geshinga, a humble end time messenger with an apostolic wisdom of the word of God and end times revelations. Preparing the bride of Christ for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in complete holiness and graciousness. Go to Play Store Android application and search Apostle Simon Geshinga click and download the application all messages are offline once you download them receive back the ancient word of god reviving the saints for the kingdom of god by inspired living word of god search apostles simon gishinga on play store application <laughs>